So sanding day is here, finally. Um, gonna sand the floors down, get them ready for stain and for polyurethane. And kind of excited about it. You know, I spent a lot of time laying these floors down and shooting video about laying these floors down. Um, but before I start, I was, in mean, this new piece of equipment, wanna go over some safety stuff. And as you can see on this, there's a lot of orange tags about safety. So to start off, these two things, are fire hazards. So apparently when using a sander, the sawdust, the fine sawdust that it kicks up can spontaneously combust. Never heard of it happening, never saw it happening, but I'm gonna believe them and follow their recommendation that to empty the bag outside and well, as the sticker says, don't throw it in an incinerator. I don't know who would do that, but I'm not gonna do that either. A Couple other things I'm going to have for this as far as safety. Uh, I'm gonna have my work gloves. These are Kevlar to so protect my hands just in case. Um, Earplugs, this is gonna make a lot of noise. And the respirator. Um, I'm gonna use this because this is gonna make a mess. There's gonna be a lot, even with the collection bag, I'm thinking a lot of dust is gonna kick around this place. So with that said, why don't we go over the game plan? We're gonna start out by draping this room off to keep the dust from getting into the rest of the house. Then we're gonna set up the sander, and from there we'll start sanding the floors. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use progressive grits. So I'm gonna start out with a 36, then I'm gonna move over to a 60, then an 80, and then finally I'm gonna do a 120. But between the 80 and the 120, I'm gonna trowel fill this floor. That's gonna take all those little cracks and spaces between the wood that I couldn't quite get perfect and fill them in. Once we stain it, you'll never notice they were ever there. The reason we go through progressive grits of sandpaper is, well, the 36 and the 60 are gonna do most of the leveling and most of the, uh, you know, flattening of the floor, making it nice and smooth. The paper after that, it's gonna to start to take out the sand marks um, of the previous grit. So we'll go all the way up to 120 and we'll have a really nice fine finish. Now that we have everything we need to get started, let's seal this room up and start some sanding. <laughs> Now that we got the room pretty well sealed up, I'm just gonna put a fan in the window to create a little negative pressure, and that should help keep all the dust from the rest of the house. Now we can start setting up the sander. Before I put the sandpaper on, I do wanna mention something that's different than what most people do with the sander. I'm using a random orbital uh, square sander with a, these rectangular sheets of sandpaper. Now the reason I chose this rather than the traditional route of using a drum sander is one, a drum sander is harder to use, and I'm trying to make this as easy as possible, being that you know, it's the first time for me doing this. And second, um, these are new floors. They're not that bad. They're pretty even, they're flat. I don't need to take a lot of material off to get them perfect. So this may take a little bit longer, um, but it's easier to use. It doesn't risk um, we have to start and stop and the drum burns into the uh, wood and having to correct for that. So. This should make the process a lot easier, but maybe a little bit longer because it does take a little bit longer to sand the floors. Okay, so now I'm gonna start assembling the sander. First thing I'm gonna do is take the back off this sandpaper. Um, for some reason this has some kind of protective barrier, but it just pulls right off. Now the bottom's a little tacky, even though this is a hook and loop system. So next thing is, I'm just gonna lean the sander back. And then I'm gonna place the pad right on the bottom. Now I'll lift it back up. lean the machine back up. Now 
The next thing that needs to be done is the dust collection bag it needs to be attached. This simply just slides right over the tube. The final step is to connect the power. Light goes green means power to the device and we are ready to start sanding. In an effort to show full transparency, I totally screwed up putting the sandpaper on. Um, in my defense, the one I looked up online, the instructions had hook and loop. This one does not use it. And when I was there, the box store didn't really catch it when I rented. But they did make it right and gave me the correct pieces and for free um, for having to go back there. So this is how it should be done. After lowering this down, you must first put one of these buffing pads on the bottom. This attaches to the spikes. Now once that's attached, you can put the sandpaper on. Now we're ready to go. I have the sander in my starting position, so now all I'd have to do is start this up, and it's pretty easy to do. All you do is you push a little safety button over here, and then you pull back both handles. The sander will start going. Now the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do half the floor going towards this side, and then I'm going to turn around and do the other room. So each pass, I'm going to go backwards, forwards, move over a few inches so it overlaps, backwards, forwards, and follow all the way through. One thing to be careful about while you're doing this is this cord. Um, you don't want to run over it. You can see someone already buffed this one right here. So if you have to stop and move the cord out of the way, just let it stop. The nice thing about using this um, orbital sander is it won't leave marks from starting and stopping on the floor and you can, you can do that. Okay, let's get started. So that's one pass down and it made a big difference. The floor got lighter, um, a lot of the grain is popping. Uh, yeah, it's, I would say it worked. Um, it took a while, it definitely took about an hour and a half to go through that because once I was done with the big machine, I went around the sides, uh, just the areas that it couldn't get to with a palm sander using the same grit. So now everything's even blended together and I'm ready to move on to the next grit sandpaper, which in this case is gonna be the 60 grit. I'm gonna to get to that right now and we'll see if anything changes. But right now it's looking good. Um, floors feel a little rough to the touch, but I don't see any kind of scratch marks or divots that I was afraid of uh, getting with the belt sander, uh, with the um, drum sander. So, so far this orbital seems to have worked out well. We'll see if it continues to work out well. This is definitely messy work. Um, you should vacuum between each different grid. So I went from the 40 grid or 38 grid to the 60 grid on that last pass. I vacuumed both times. Uh, that's to get any dust off the floor. Now, this thing does have dust collection on it, but it's next to useless. It hasn't caught any dust. In fact, all it does is hold dust and then let it back on the floor um, on the outside. I think it's because it should have a skirt on the bottom, but it didn't come with the rental. So, you know, another good one for the rental place. Anyway, uh, with the 60 grit done, the floors are starting to become very, very smooth. Uh, I can still feel little bumps and on them, but I can definitely see why you need to go through your 38, 60, and 80 before you fill. Before that, the fill would kind of get caught in some of the grooves before they get knocked down. Floor is looking really nice though. It's uh, got a very nice color to it and kind of getting uh, attached to it. We were supposed to stain this to match the rest of the house, but I don't know, might leave it this way. We'll have to see how it goes from now on. So I got one more grit until we fill. So let's knock that off. And just if anyone's keeping track, that last pass, including doing the, doing the edging and vacuuming, 
took about 45 minutes. So it does go faster after the first pass. I'm getting more used to this machine, which is actually very easy to handle. Um, and it's going a bit quicker. All right, let's get to the next one. The 80 grit sanding is done. The floor looks really, really, really fantastic. Um, the next part in the process scares me a little bit because right now everything looks good, but there are some marks on the floor, some gaps between boards which were imperfectly straight from manufacturing, nail pops uh, from where I had the face nail, the boards near the edges. All this needs to be covered up. So there's two options for this. One is to find all the pieces and use wood putty to go in and then fill them out and sand them down or to trowel fill and this seems what the professionals do so I'm going to try that. The reason this scares me is because I am now going to put wood filler across this entire floor. Literally squeegee it on all over the place. So the, I have a bucket of wood filler and the important thing is to try to match the wood you're using. So this says red oak on the bottle and this is a red oak floor. So right now what I'll do is I am going to finish clearing out the room. There's a few more items in here and I will show you how I start this. I won't be able to show the whole process because I gotta get the camera out of this room so I don't paint myself into a corner, so to say. So this stuff goes down, it goes down wet. It takes about an hour to two hours to dry, at which point it should look like kind of a hazy film over the floor. So I'll fill all the gaps and had kind of coated the flooring. At which point we'll go back, we'll do the final uh, 100 or 120 sandpaper over the top of this to take that film off. And we should have beautiful looking floors without any kind of holes or scratches in them. So let's see how this turns out. So this is how the trail fill will work. The open, the bottle of wood filler, or the can of wood filler. It's pre-mixed, and I'm gonna spill this on the floor. Then, using a taping knife, the same would use for drywall, I'm gonna very quickly work it into the floor using circular figure eight-ish type patterns. And that's to get it going in from all different directions so it fills every pore. Now, I'm gonna show you a little bit over here, but then I'm gonna go to the other side of the room and finish the whole thing. So. Be careful, start on the furthest side of the room and work your way out to a door because this does need to dry and you can't step on it. Let's get started and see how this works. And a little bit does go a long way. Now you want to make this very thin, kind of like if you were skim coating and it dries fairly fast on the not so big areas where you're not filling too much. didn't quite work out exactly the way I'd hoped. The pro filler that I, that I had purchased, it dries really, really quick. So 